that camera set and greetings unsettled souls welcome to the correct views it is sam ib during political commentary a little bit late there wasn't it during political commentary for the media speaks also i want to give a shout out like i said to my facebook listeners wits news I've been doing quite a bit of writing in news for them lately. And um, as we get into the uh, the election the election talk, we're going to do what we do every year. Uh, you may have trouble seeing this in the top camera. We're going to officially change the decor. That's right. It is no longer Halloween. Therefore, we're going to decorate for Thanksgiving. Here we go. There you go. Happy Thanksgiving. See how see how that was? It works out great like that. All right, friends. Uh, we're going to get into... Uh, they're going to be a bit more serious here. And, uh, and Halloween was a blast, by the way. The characters were hilarious. November 6th is around the corner. And I think it's time for us to have a very serious discussion about the election. Because there are things that I'm just not understanding here. About those who are opposing Trump. And we're going to look, we're not going to get into the memes that he's some kind of a Nazi. He's not a Nazi. He's got Jewish family members, okay? We're not even going to talk about what the media is attempting to bait us into in regards to this. Rather, we're going to take a more common sense approach to it and look at some of the issues that people are talking about, particularly as this election rolls up. First of all, the caravan. Now... If I decided to take a trip to El Salvador or Honduras or wherever, I just decided I'm going to walk in and I'm going to expect them to let me come in the country without saying who I am. And then I'm going to expect them to get me started with my new life in that nation, even though I probably do not speak the language. Why is that a ridiculous statement? And yet America is supposed to allow that here. Okay, here's an example. Um, I was blessed. My wife and I were very blessed with being able to go to Paradise Island. And if you haven't been there, the only way that I can describe how pretty this is is simply to say that it lives up to the name Paradise Island in every way. It is stunningly nice. And uh, I wasn't at the hotel, the Atlantis, uh, but we were on a cruise ship, so I can't complain. It was breathtaking. It's wonderful. Or when I went in, I didn't have, I didn't have a passport. I had to get my guy. I know this sounds like an amazing, groundbreaking request. I had to check in at the door. They told me what time I needed to be back on the ship. They told me that if I had, if I was leaving the country because I was a criminal, that there was a very good likelihood that the United States would not allow me back in. So, did that make the, were the Caribbeans being racist towards me? By making sure that I wasn't bringing crime into their city, into their town, into their country. So, they were being racist towards me, right? But yet, when, when we want to know where what somebody did in their host country just to make sure they're not a criminal, that is somehow considered racist? How is that? I mean, the, the Caribbean even went so far as to tell me that if I was to get hurt or needed, like, medical attention of some kind, I needed to inform the authorities. Or there could be repercussions. I might not be allowed maybe ever to go back again. Which would have been a shame because I really did believe. I thought I died and gone to heaven. It was so nice. Why is that racist? I'm there's a disconnect here. I'm not getting it. When when uh, Mr. Trump says those people, the media likes to try to spin that and roll it around to mean brown skinned people. Ooh, he hates brown skinned people. What he means is criminals who are fleeing justice in their country, coming here. Those people mean criminals, not race. People would not be fleeing into another country 
without even checking in, without filing asylum. And get this, about the asylum issue. How many of you know that Mexico okayed asylum for those who were fleeing Honduras, El Salvador, those areas? They were fleeing that. Well, how in the world is that? If you are fleeing these areas and you're saying that you need to go to a safer country and then Mexico allows you to stay and you just keep on traveling. No, you need to check in at the door. And if you don't believe me, if you're listening to this and you think I'm some racist bigot with a last name like the Ganji, that would be kind of hard, but we'll go with it. Um, go ahead and try to try to walk on into Mexico once and see what happens to you. Better yet, just try to walk right on into Canada without checking in at the border. See if they like that very much. See if any other nation appreciates that very much. But yet America is supposed to do that. Why is that? There's a disconnect there. The other issue I, I'm, I want to show people is uh, this was sent to me actually by Sarah regarding the, uh, the caravan, as it's being called. And if I can get it to come up, quicker than glue dries. Here we go. It was posted in the uh, the Bruce Elliott show. All of a sudden, thousands of Guatemalans, Hondurans, decided to walk 1,500 miles, buy a backpack, arrange for food for 12,000 meals every day for two months, get money for travel expenses, have drinking water for 4,000 people every day, times 60, that's 720,000 mils for the trip, get directions for the best route to take, have extra clothes and sanitary items, have medical care available, prepare for rainy days, get 4,000 sleeping bags. If they can cover 25 miles per day, it will take the refugees 60 days to cover 1,500 miles. And they all decided to do this all of a sudden, all at once, and they were knew, knowing that they would arrive in the USA just in time for our election. What an amazing event. Just let that sink in. Okay, you know what? I think that says an awful lot. And I, I tell you who would agree with me is anybody who has ever attempted to book a show or book tours with bands or anything like that. It's mind-blowingly hard to put something like that together. And yet we're supposed to openly believe somehow that that's the case here. That this was some organic move that isn't getting help from anybody. And when people start wondering if maybe the deep pockets of George Soros or something is involved in this, they're labeled as some kind of a conspiracy theorist. And yet at the same time, every time anything is funded on the right, it's immediately credited to the Koch brothers, and they're not considered insane for questioning if the Koch brothers did it. So I think that puts it in a fair perspective. And there are other issues here. Um, I don't think anybody really cares about the global warming debate, but you should because the money that's being saved by Trump's administration rightly pulling us out of many of the very expensive agreements that we were in regarding global warming has been a boom. Energy prices for everyone listening to this has gone down. And none of the predictions made in Al Gore's movie, Inconvenient Truth, pertaining to 2016, but it's now 2018. Nothing that was supposed to happen by 2016 ever did that. Roger wrote, the caravan should be called an invasion. Where are they getting the trucks? Where is the man with the gun handing out the money? Coincidence. Bring the truth back to the people. Soros. Yeah, and if it's not Soros, do you mean to tell me that George Soros doesn't know about this or doesn't know who's funding it? Okay, then the next time something pops up like this and you want to ask if, even if the Koch brothers didn't do it, if... It will then be unreasonable for you to think that somebody with that much power within the party system doesn't know about it. Cook brothers wouldn't know, right? Do you see how absurd this is? They're painting Trump with an entirely different brush than they would ever want painted with. Um, if you're going to vote, let's take a look at Obamacare. 
Okay, I've told this story before, but I'm going to make it quick. Uh, regular up there subscribers, you know it well. Um, as you can see here, I have uh, a while ago, a number of years ago, cut the tip of my finger off on a broken aquarium. And if you're squeamish, you'll love this. I hope you're eating lasagna. You'll be in heaven. If you can imagine a peach, and now imagine taking a spoon and cutting out a section of the peach, scooping it out, but allowing a bit of it just to hang. That is sort of what this finger was. So I drove myself at high speeds to the hospital. And when I checked in, I said, you know, if you have someone dying or something, I definitely, but if you could speed me back there, I'm a keyboardist and I'm very concerned right now. Well, I was taken back to the ER and uh, the gentleman who was sewing me back together said, uh, you're not going to like this very much. He came in, novocaine me immediately and began to sew while I could still feel a little bit. Turns out he was a guitarist and he had done the same thing to himself, not with an aquarium, but otherwise. And he knew what needed to be done. And today it doesn't affect me at all, thankfully. And this was done with insurance that I could pay for. It was between 60 to 90 a month. And this was directly before Obamacare. So I mean, just a few years ago, we're not talking a long time ago. That same insurance went up to $250 a month under Obamacare. Needless to say, today, I don't have insurance. But because of President Obama, I did get to pay a fine last year for not having insurance. Thankfully, Donald Trump got rid of that. So what, how is that progress? If people are losing their insurance because of insurance that's supposed to cover everyone, then doesn't that sort of imply that this is not insurance that is covering everyone? I gotta be honest, I'm a libertarian more than a conservative. I'm not that delighted that Donald Trump's solution to much of this is to use the federal government. Because, much like abortion, any issue that, and this is according to the U.S. Constitution, this is in the Constitution, any issue that is not outlined in the founding document is to be left to the states. So, while I was no huge Mitt Romney fan, he was correct. If the states choose to have their own health care system, that's legal. Now, you could argue that each person should be allowed to opt out. Other people would say, no, okay, I understand that argument. We'll have that one another day. It's its own topic. But the states having the right to, or the right, states have the right to bring insurance in if the people want that. It is not the job of the federal government. Okay, really, does anybody listening to this, even if if you're on welfare, I, I mean, that's no problem. I was awful close. Um, I've had times in my life when things have been dreadful. Do you think that this, do you really believe that the federal government paying to give money to the state government who pays to give it to the workers when much of the money is collected from the states to begin with is the best way to distribute money. Okay, we just had Halloween. Let's 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 use the earlier analogy. You're trick-or-treating. And there's a handful of candy for you, but the neighbor next door gave the candy to this neighbor. And on the way over, they ate some. And then the people in this house got the candy, and they ate some, and there's only a couple pieces for you. Wouldn't it be easier to just have each house? Okay, to use the little trick-or-treat analogy. Okay, why is the federal government collecting money from the states? And then, slowly but surely, all of that trickles back into the state again after it's paid a whole bunch of people. This is, this is ridiculous. That's why states should do it. But having said that, at least Mr. Trump has made sure that you're not paying for the fact that you can no longer afford insurance. 
No, he's not perfect, but I think the rates will come down inevitably, probably not to what they were, but can hope. Um, I don't, I'm not getting the huge, we want a blue wave. A blue wave for what? To wave goodbye to everything that's working? We now have coal production in the, like, let's go, let's go to this one too, before we stop on the uh, voting questions. And if there's other ones, let me know. I'll be happy to try to get to them, but by Tuesday, I'll try. Um, here's another one. Let us pretend, this is tough, but let us pretend that there really is man-made global warming. Let's pretend there is. Okay. Here you have America. Part of the lightsaber prop. All right, here you have America. And we can't produce any gas or electric because it's going to warm the planet. So here's Saudi Arabia. They don't have such laws. Now, if America makes this fuel, if America makes this gas, these carbons, whatever, if America makes this and burns it, it's going to have an effect on the environment. That's what the global warming people say. So, our laws allow us to buy the energy from Saudi Arabia. Okay. When that energy comes here, unless you're sitting in a house, and if you're in Ohio, I bet you're not, because we're freezing right now. I bet you have heat on in your house. Okay. Why are we paying Saudi Arabia to sell us energy that's going to warm the planet just as much. The Saudis have to make it, so why aren't we making it? We're going to burn it anyhow. Do you see where the left in this country has gone zany stupid? And if those three analogies that I've given you, and the lab have been talking for 18 minutes, I'm going to change topic and jump off here. If If just looking at that doesn't imply who to vote for. I mean, I'm not even saying so much vote straight GOP. Here's some wonderful news. Do you know we have libertarians on the ballot? There's two libertarians on the ballot in Ohio. I think in some districts, maybe more. And yes, I'm leaning strongly towards voting libertarian. Um, don't vote Democrats into office. Unless you want to give Saudi Arabia the money to sell you the energy that you could have made here so you can heat your house. Because if you heat your house with energy made here, then you're going to burn the same energy. That's really what the Democrats are in favor. And friends, if, if, that, doesn't, if that doesn't open your eyes, then I have no idea. Uh, two topics to get to before we zip out. This one's going to take about 30 seconds. Everybody keeps telling me Peggy Sue, dead at 78, inspiration for Buddy Holly's hit single Passes Away in the Hospital. I had meant to mention this. I had talked, I said that I, during a show I was going to do so, and then I never got to it. And I have one listener that absolutely was like, you forgot Buddy Holly. I, okay, I'm so sorry. Uh, she was born in Texas, and her uh, name was used in Holly's 1958 hit, Peggy Sue, she wrote the autobiography and said, I wanted to give him, Holly, his voice, and it's my book and my memoirs. And she wrote about him and uh, unfortunately lost her battle and is no longer with us. And somebody adamant that I get to that story. And uh, we do a lot of things that aren't politics here. So, yes, when the inspiration to a legendary rock and roll song passes on, we can uh, definitely do that. And that brings us to, friends, you know what that brings us to, at least if you know anything about the show at all, the dumdy of the day. Now, I have to admit something and give myself a bit of a dumdy here. Things have been caustic here, chaotic to say the least. Go back to my Facebook as a Nazi video a couple of videos back. However, um, I am like... Three, I'm, I'm two hats back. I'm going to be three hats back when I do the next song in terms of getting these mailed. But don't worry, I am going to mail out the Dunce Cap of the Month. I'm at least going to have one or two mailed within the next, uh, probably by next weekend. How's that? And I got to get the other ones mailed. And that, friends, does bring us to the dumdy of the day. Now, a lot of people are going to say that this is particularly cruel, but it's not. And you, many of you are going to laugh and you're going to feel bad for laughing. And you're going to wonder why I even brought this story here. 
I own a couple of properties which are in the process of uh, being repaired so they can be rented, and it's a long and boring story. I could tell it to you, and you'd be dead asleep within 30 seconds. However, what matters is the house was sitting, and I was waiting to have it worked on, and some nameless swine, or swines, broke into the house and stripped the copper out of the uh, gone presto see a zip zilch out. When I came across this story, while I'm not happy that anybody dies, if somebody does have to go, those who are going after people who are really just trying to make ends meet in life, you know, Darwin sometimes. Uh, Hamro Suchana, copper thieves fused together by 24,000 volts of electricity. A pair of thieves met a nasty end while attempting to steal copper wire from a public lighting substation in Detroit, Michigan. The two men were electrocuted by 24,000 volts of electricity during the theft. It's very gruesome, very, very gruesome, said Captain Kyra Joy Hope from the Detroit Police Department. Suspects trying to attempt to steal copper from the location touched the transformer, which knocked it out and subsequently to their demise, uh, she explained to Fox 2 News. Medical examiners, it says, believe that the men died instantaneously when they touched the transformer. Their bodies were badly burned and fused together when they were discovered by police on Friday. If you're down, out of luck, or in any kind of way, reach out to your neighborhood police officers. We have a neighborhood police officers resource unit. And again, they're saying there's social workers. There's a million places uh, in the area for people to go if they are struggling. The, the right thing to do is not try to go after your neighbor who's also struggling and rip the copper out of his damn house. All right, friends, you're listening to the correct views. And I see the comment. No, I'm not really. I don't really believe in Darwin. It was a joke. Uh, thank you for listening, friends. Don't forget you can donate. You please, before you log off, please do this. You can donate at the correct views at hotmail.com through PayPal. Uh, Facebook. It has been a nightmare for us. YouTube has demonetized us. I get paid for doing the show from you who donate. How do you donate? The correct views at hotmail.com through PayPal. Good night, friends. God bless. It may take me a moment to get all of these cameras shut off at one time.